Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. This week we're doing a bit of an experiment. We've done um, different plantings of potatoes during the course of a season, sometimes in containers and sometimes in the ground. But this time what we're going to be doing in our tunnel is where we uh, now have some open space. Uh, today is August 10th. When we harvested our potatoes from earlier, we had some that you know had gotten near the surface and they got exposed to sun, so they had some green on them. And we're gonna take those and use those as uh, seed potatoes because some of them actually, the eyes had begun to sprout. So I left them out to, as I guess as they call kiting, which is a mechanism basically of just exposing them to sunlight and letting those eyes begin to uh, you know, show uh, signs of sprouting. And this is what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant these guys in our tunnel here. Now the idea behind this is, is that being as late as it is, and these are early potatoes, is that we may actually be able to get some new potatoes, which, uh, you know, towards the end of October or thereabouts, and that would be able to, uh, you know, give us some fresh spuds, say, you know, right around Thanksgiving. So that's kind of the theory behind it. We'll see if we can do it. Let me show you what the potatoes look like. Okay, so these are the guys that, you know, had gone through uh, harvest. And here's an example. This guy's here is sprouted. See, it's already got a sprout on it. So we're going to plant these, basically these small guys. And you can see like the eyes right here have uh, sprouted. And that's what we're going to be putting in. So it's a mixture of reds and uh, whites. I think the varieties mostly of what we have in the whites are probably Yukons. So the whole objective is, is we're not going to get huge spuds out of this, but we're going to get the size, you know, that would be maybe, you know, good at about this size, you know, by the end of October, uh, before our light levels are too low and maybe it's too cold. And that, that was kind of what we're shooting for. So let's get them laid out. All right. So we laid out on this side over here in the center bed, approximately, oh, it's, it's roughly about 25 spuds. And I'm only going to do two lines and I put the actual spuds where they're going to be placed is next to near an emitter. So when we do water during this drier times, things are going to be in good shape. Now, the other side of the row, we laid out probably approximately 35. Uh, you can kind of see them. You got to kind of zoom in and take a look, but you can see the individual spudlets. That's the same idea. We planted them kind of uh, near an emitter, or that's where they're going to be. Now, what you may notice is that these are laying on the surface of the soil. And that's because what we're going to do is I'm just going to scratch these guys in down maybe about an inch below the surface of the soil. And then today I'm going to put over the top of it about one to two inches of rotted straw hay. It's actually hay, grass hay, not straw hay. And, and that is going to be what's going to be built up. So once these guys get up and they get up to about three or four inches, I'm going to put more in. And that's the whole idea of not having them uh, packed in, you know, in a, in a tighter way like I did earlier in the season. Uh, so at the same time, I'm going to get two benefits out of this. I'm going to get some spuds and I'm going to be adding back next year's organic material uh, for the bed. So also, just as a form of a bit of an update, these are our... Uh, uh, hoop house pumpkins that we planted. It's now been approximately three and a half weeks. It's about 25 days since they went in the ground. And we've been fertilizing them with the uh, Jadam liquid fertilizer as well as using uh, Jadam microorganism solution each time we fertilize. So they're really responding well and they're just about ready, some of them about ready to spread. Some of them are bush type, so it'll be kind of a little bit different. But I just thought I'd show you these guys are looking real good. So this mulch is rotted um, hay. It's about, uh, you know, it's from two years ago. It's been out in the environment. And I'm putting it down at about, uh, oh, probably a half to three quarters of an inch. Uh, just enough for the potatoes to get started. So once they get above this and they get sprouted up, then the next last step we'll do is we'll put in an extra thick mulch for the actual spuds to form. So this is it. After we applied the, the mulch to the top of the bed, we then wetted it in real good. And uh, not going to put any more mulch on it until the tubers actually start to show germination. And they get a bit above this, uh, maybe a couple, three inches above. And then we'll just add another layer of um, 
compost over the top or rotted uh, hay. So that's kind of the uh, basics of the experiment. Didn't take long to do it, about probably 45 minutes uh, to get things planted and covered up and watered in. And uh, it should be, uh, they're kind of next to drip line. So as the plants germinate, we'll have plenty of uh, moisture right next to the plant itself. The mulch will help keep uh, the soil cool at least through August and September. So I'm kind of hoping that, uh, that that works out pretty well. Now, weed seeds may be an issue in the future with the mulch, but you know, I've dealt with a lot of weed seeds in here before and it's just a matter of walking through and making sure I keep track of things with the, uh, with the collinear hoe. Uh, I think the value of the organic material being that it's on site and we didn't have to pay for it is worth a lot more than you know, just quickly making sure that the uh, weeds are taken care of. So anyway, we'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching folks and we'll catch you on the next video.